Welcome to this audio descriptive introduction to Shakespeare's birthplace. It is one of a number of Shakespeare heritage sites you can visit in Stratford-upon-Avon, cared for by the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. Introductions to Shakespeare's New Place and Hall's Croft are also available online. The Trust holds the world's largest public collection related to Shakespeare, comprising books, archival documents and museum artefacts. These can be accessed through an online catalogue or by visiting the Reading Room, and collection highlights are on display within the historic houses. Shakespeare's birthplace is on Henley Street in the centre of Stratford-upon-Avon. It is accessed through the Shakespeare Centre, which is next door. The site is a ten-minute walk from Stratford-upon-Avon railway station, up Ulster Road, crossing over one main road with a pedestrian crossing. A left turn leads to Windsor Street, and Henley Street is the first right. There are blue badge parking spaces at the end of Henley Street, nearest the railway station, and a multi-storey car and coach park on Windsor Street. Henley Street is about 25 metres wide and pedestrianised for most of the day, with a row of bollards at the end nearest the railway station. Tudor architecture mingles with Georgian, Victorian and 20th century buildings. Outdoor cafe seating spills onto the street. Shakespeare's birthplace is a large two-storey building with attic rooms under its pitched terracotta tiled roof. It's about 30 metres wide and, in Shakespeare's lifetime, was the largest house on Henley Street. Its walls are aged, light brown plaster in rectangular panels between rich brown wooden timbers. There are rectangular windows on the ground and first floor, with diamond-shaped leaded panes, and two wooden doors, one sheltered by a tiled porch. These older entrances are no longer in use. To the left, the Shakespeare Centre is a red brick and concrete building with pitched roofs to echo the architecture around it. It comprises developments from 1964 and 1981. The entrances are three cream-painted brick archways, which lead through to double glass doors. The central arch is for individual visitors, and the right for groups. An accessible toilet is situated through a further door to the left of these entrances. A bag search is carried out as you go in, and for individual visitors, a rope barrier marks a path to the front desk. Assistance dogs are welcome on all sites. Concessionary tickets are available, which include entrance to additional Shakespeare Birthplace Trust sites. For further information, visit the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust website at shakespeare.org.uk. Here you can also listen to audio descriptions of highlight objects from the collections. Some of these objects will be on display on site. There is level access throughout the Shakespeare Centre, including exhibition spaces, a garden and the ground floor of the house itself. Access to the first floor is via a narrow stairway. Due to the age of the building, there is no lift. A tablet with images of the first floor is available on request. Some of the staff are trained in audio description, and descriptive tours and large print guides are offered. Before moving into the garden, you will pass through an introductory exhibition entitled Famous Beyond Words. Housed within four rooms with low lighting, the exhibition includes portraits of Shakespeare, a film about his works and impact around the world with audio extracts, information about his family, and a 15th century market cross base. A highlight is the first folio, which is displayed open in a freestanding glass case at waist height. The first folio is the first collected edition of Shakespeare's plays, published in 1623. The pages are about A4 in size, each one containing two columns of handset printed text in a rectangular frame. 
The pages are slightly browned and transparent and bound in rusty brown leather. Just before the exit to the garden, there's a family tree on the wall, starting with William Shakespeare's parents, John and Mary, and charting William and his seven siblings. It shows that William married Anne Hathaway in 1582 and had three children. On the opposite wall, a historical timeline of the birthplace site begins in 1552, with John Shakespeare being fined for leaving a pile of muck outside this house in Henley Street. A flagstone path curves right around the centre and into the garden. There is a tree planted in the path, marked off by metal wire at ankle height. An additional exhibition space is accessed by a short flight of stairs or platform lift. The garden is rectangular, with verdant flower and herb beds, small lawns, pear trees, holly bushes, sculptures and benches. There's a path around the perimeter, and a building on the far side houses toilets, including accessible toilets. When Shakespeare lived here, this would have been a working garden for growing food and housing animals. You may hear lines from Shakespeare's plays drifting across. Resident actors, Shakespeare allowed, are stationed at the birthplace exit and will perform speeches on request. The house is on the right side of the garden. The main body of the building is rectangular. A wing was later added. It juts from the middle into the garden at a slight angle, skewed towards the Shakespeare centre. The wing's facing side has a closed wooden door and a three-panelled diamond pane window above, canopied by a narrow tiled roof. The entrance is at the end nearest the Shakespeare Centre, with a knotted mulberry tree beside it. There is a single route through the house, which finishes at the opposite end of the building. The floor is slightly uneven underfoot. The rooms offer an atmospheric sense of how the interior would have looked when William Shakespeare and his family lived there, with costumed guides to tell you more about the family's history. The first room is small, with low ceilings and flagstone floors, and a hearth on the left. White plaster walls and ceiling are scored with deep brown timber, and an enclaved window on the right looks onto Henley Street. This was originally one of the rooms of a cottage, bought by John Shakespeare. The size, about five metres by four, is that of an average dwelling in the early 1600s, with one room below and one above. John gave William and Anne the cottage to live in when they married, and John and his family lived in the houses next door. Originally three terraced houses, these were knocked through to create one large dwelling. After William inherited the properties on John's death in 1601, he added the wing to the garden side. Three further bigger rooms are on the ground floor. A parlour, hall and a glover's workshop. Parts of the parlour and hall are roped off, but visitors are free to wander in the workshop which has many tactile objects. These rooms are more decorative, reflecting the Shakespeare's middle-class aspirations. The parlour is lined with painted fabrics in a red and blue-grey floral pattern. The room contains a four-poster bed. This may seem surprising, but it was not unusual for rooms to have multiple uses. This one would have doubled as a living space and a guest bedroom. The hall is where the family ate, drank and prepared food. It has a central trestle table, piled with realistic-looking fruit, bread and pies on pewter and wooden plates, alongside earthenware jugs and glasses. Finally, the Glover workshop contains worktops with treated leather, furs and tools laid out to be touched and three scented boxes with which to experience the smells of the workshop. These are usually found on the windowsill before you exit the building. A passage between the parlour and workshop leads to a staircase. The stairs initially have handrails on both sides, changing to a handrail only on the left, which ends abruptly at the top step. 
The stairs lead to a bedroom, with an opening through to an exhibition room on the left. At the far end of the exhibition room, there are four window panels displayed in a glass case. Each panel is about half a metre wide and over a metre high, and made up of small rectangular panes of light green glass, some of which are cracked. These were previously installed in the room in which Shakespeare was born. As the birthplace later became a site of pilgrimage, many visitors wanted to leave their mark. Each pane is scratched with signatures, including 19th century luminaries such as Ellen Terry and Henry Irving. Shakespeare's birthplace itself is beyond the bedroom at the top of the stairs. It is believed that Shakespeare was born in this room in April 1564. It is decorated with furniture of the time. As you enter, there is a window on the left, with clear and pale green panels where the marked ones used to be. The expense of glass meant that glazed windows would only be found in wealthier buildings, so at the time of Shakespeare's birth, his mother Mary would have simply opened wooden shutters to look down on Henley Street. A four-poster bed with green and orange curtains is opposite the entrance, marked off by a rope barrier. A brass warming pan lies on its green bedspread. Beneath, another low truckle bed is stored, with a yellow chamber pot and wooden cradle next to it. Two carved chests stand along the far wall, with artificial candles on top and domestic items on the floor nearby. A baby's bathtub, pairs of shoes and a jug and bowl for washing. Opposite the chests is a hearth, sealed off by perspex panels. The walls are lined with dark blue fabric, featuring a delicate pattern of thistles, roses and honeysuckle, above which is a painted red cornice. The remaining rooms are the wing which William leased as the Maidenhead Inn. Wooden pub signs hang on the wall. The floor slopes slightly and stairs down have a handrail on the right which stops at the final step before the bottom. Opposite the bottom of the stairs is a wooden chair, its back carved with a grapevine. It is said that Shakespeare sat in this chair when he won a drinking contest at the Falcon Inn in Bidford-upon-Avon. The path continues through the inn kitchen, which has a large hearth and three sensory boxes on a window sill. Beyond, to the left of the exit door, is a roped-off pantry. There's a table laden with replica eggs, meat and fruit, shelves of original earthenware jugs and jars, and wooden barrels and wicker baskets on the floor. The exit leads back out to the garden. The exit is through the shop at the rear of the garden. Visitors arrive back on Henley Street exiting a red brick house on the other side of Shakespeare's birthplace to the Shakespeare Centre. The Shakespeare Birthplace Trust website, shakespeare.org.uk, has a wealth of further resources, including information about access. You can also phone on 01789 204 016.